Well, hello everybody, my name is Roger and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So, if you've been following me for any length of time, you may know that I read books from quite a few different genres. I read uh, mysteries, uh, thrillers, fantasy, urban fantasy, both adult and young adult, with uh, the occasional romance thrown in. But I've never outgrown my fondness for young adult novels, especially fantasies, as I uh, find so many of them to be absolutely phenomenal. And of course, I've received quite a bit of flack about that over the years as well. So I've been reading quite a bit about the new YA books that are coming out this year in 2019 that sound intriguing to me and books that I haven't already mentioned on this channel. So I've come up with a list of 13 young adult books that sound interesting to me and that I'd like to read this year. Uh, but uh, is it unlucky to have a list of 13 items? I guess we'll see. So, uh, as usual, I'll put a pre-order link to all of the books down below so you can uh, check them out further if you are so inclined. So the first book on my list is entitled Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. So I've been hearing a lot about this one actually. This follows uh, Ellery who lives in a small town called Echo Ridge. Now her aunt went missing there at the age of 17 and only five years ago the homecoming queen was murdered. So now Ellery has to move there to live with a grandmother that she barely knows and soon Ellery learns that the town is hiding secrets. And moreover, another girl goes missing at homecoming, just like the one five years ago. So sounds good. So the second book on my list is entitled, We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia. So this is a romantic fantasy that follows Daniela Vargas, a society wife in training at the Medio School for Girls. And uh, Daniela is at the top of her class. But her pedigree isn't real. In fact, she should not even be at that particular high society school. So she must keep the truth hidden if she doesn't want to be sent back to the fringes of society. So then she's recruited as a spy for a resistance group who's fighting to bring equality to a medio, uh, or medio, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And of course, there's a forbidden love as well. It sounds intriguing and I've read a lot of positive early reviews about it thus far. So the next book on my list is entitled On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. So Angie Thomas, if you're not familiar with her, she's the author of last year's a huge hit, The Hate You Give. Now I got this book in the mail, the new one, uh, from the Book of the Month Club uh, just this month and I really can't wait to delve into it. So this follows 16 year old Brie, whose dream is to become one of the greatest rappers of all time. She's also the daughter of an underground hip hop legend who died right before he hit it big. But Brie's not having an easy time of it. Uh, she's thought of as a hoodlum at her school, her mom loses her job and there's no money to be had. So angry and frustrated, she writes and uploads her first song, which supposedly goes viral for all the wrong reasons. So this book, book is all about fighting for your dreams, even when the odds are stacked against you. So it sounds fantastic. Oh, and I heard that already this book has been optioned for a movie. So uh, way to go, Angie Thomas. So the next book is entitled The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. So Samantha Shannon is a New York Times best-selling author of The Bone Season and this new book is an epic high fantasy about a world divided and on the brink of war with dragons and the women must lead the fight to save it. There's also a queendom without an heir, an awakening of an ancient enemy, a hidden society of mages, and a good amount of forbidden magic. So yeah, this sounds like something right up my alley. So I will definitely be picking up this one. So the next book is entitled Bloodleaf by Crystal Smith. 
So this is another epic fantasy that's layered with romance, and bloodthirsty magic, and ghostly intrigue. And this is also the first book in the trilogy. So this follows Princess Uriella, who is a prisoner to her crown and the heir that nobody wants. So Princess Ariella is surrounded by spirits and banned from using her blood magic. But she manages to flee her country after an assassination attempt, though I'm not sure if she was the assassin or the intended victim. So Ariella then disguises herself as a commoner in a new land, forges new bonds, strengthens her magic, and there discovers happiness for the first time. Happiness that her crown has never allowed. She also begins to fall for a forbidden man. But the ghosts that haunt Oriella refuse to abandon her. So she finds herself surrendering to their call as they expose a wicked plot that only she can defeat. So she has to end up choosing between her crown and all the heaviness that comes with it or her new life and her new freedom. And naturally it's not going to be an easy decision for her. So I love me a fantasy and, and if you throw in some magic and ghosts then uh, I am right there. So it sounds good. So the next book that came to my attention is entitled With the Fire on High. And this is written by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now Elizabeth Acevedo is the author of The Poet X that was published in 2018 and won numerous awards and various honors. So she's coming out with this new book in 2019 and it's written in verse just like The Poet X was. Now let me say that I'm typically not, not a fan of verse, but I adored The Poet X, as well as what was it? Oh, oh, A Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which was also written in verse. So I'm definitely willing and uh, actually eager to give this one a go. This follows a bony Santiago who, after having gotten pregnant in her freshman year, has done what was needed to be done for her daughter and her grandmother. But the one place she can let it all go is in the kitchen, where she adds a little something magical to everything she cooks. And as she actually dreams of one day of being a chef after she graduates, but right now that feels like it's an impossible dream. But when she starts cooking, her talent comes crashing through. I really like the sound of this book and it's one that I'm definitely uh, planning and picking up. You know this is one of those weird things but I love books that revolve around cooking or in which one of the themes is cooking and baking and chefs etc. So um, yeah, sounds like a winner for me. So the next book on my list, this is number seven actually and it's entitled Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. So this is a young adult fantasy about a girl who poses as a boy to compete for the role of Imperial Tailor and embarks on an impossible journey to sew three magic dresses from the sun, the moon, and the stars. So it follows Maya Tamarin who dreams of becoming the greatest tailor in the land. But as a girl, that's a dream that just cannot happen because Taylor is only an occupation for boys. So when a royal messenger summons her ailing father who was once a renowned Taylor himself, Maya poses as a boy and takes his place. Now if her secret is ever discovered she'll be killed, but she decides to take the risk in order to achieve her dream and save her family from ruin. But there is one catch. Maya is one of 12 tailors vying for the job, leading to backstabbing lies and even the unwanted attention of a court magician who seems to be able to see right through her disguise. And nothing could have prepared her for the final challenge yet to come, to sew three magical gowns for the Emperor's bride-to-be from the laughter of the sun, the um, tears of the moon, and the blood of the stars. So she sets off to complete the task. So doesn't this sound intriguing? It's definitely on my list for this year. 
So our next book is entitled Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Okay, so I saw a blurb for this that says, uh, how was it? Prepare yourself for a snow-frosted, blood-drenched fairy tale where the monsters steal your heart and love ends up being the nightmare. <laughs> so when I read that, I was immediately hooked. So this follows a girl who can speak to the gods and, ha and has to save her people without managing to destroy herself in the process. So from what I understand, her, along with the prince whose life is in danger, and the boy with some sort of horrible secret, have to assassinate the king and stop the war. And along the way, a forbidden romance threatens to uh, tip the scales between light and dark. So yeah, I'm definitely reading this one. So the next book, and this is number nine, is entitled The Gilded Bulls by Roshani Shaksky. So this is set in Paris in 1889 and follows a treasure hunter named Severin, who is coerced by the ever-powerful Order of Babel to help them on a mission. And Severin is offered a treasure that he never imagined, his true inheritance. So to hunt down the ancient artifact, our hero calls upon a band of unlikely experts. There's a, a historian banished from his home, a dancer with a sinister past, and a brother in arms, if not in blood. It's also worth mentioning that what they find just might change the course of history, but they'll have to stay alive to pull it off. So sounds good. Our next book is Field Notes on Love by Jennifer E. Smith. So this is a meet-cute romance that follows Hugo and May, two teens who are thrown together on a cross-country train trip. So Hugo planned a perfect romantic weekend for him and his girlfriend before university, and that was traveling across America by train. But then his girlfriend dumps him and gives Hugo the tickets for their long-planned trip. Only it's been booked under her name, non-transferable, no exceptions. So the other team, May, she's just been rejected from film school and she stumbles across Hugo's ad in which he's looking for a replacement for uh, Margar Margaret Campbell, uh, the girlfriend. Thinking that perhaps an adventure will help get her out of the funk, she figures what the hell and contacts Hugo. Now, a cross-country train trip with a complete stranger might not seem like the best idea, but to May and Hugo, both eager to escape their, to escape their regular lives, it makes perfect sense. Of course, their arrangement soon turns into something more, but apparently life outside the train catches up with them and causes all sorts of complications. Now, I'm usually not much for romancy contemporaries. I usually stay away from them for the most part, but this is one that I just might pick up if I find myself in the mood for a light to read. It sounds kind of fun, so, uh, so I had to add at least one contemporary romance to the list. So the next book is number 11, and that's Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. So this is the first novel in a brand new trilogy set in the Shadow Hunter world. And this follows Cordelia Carstairs, uh, who's a shadow hunter and a warrior trained since childhood to battle demons. So when her father is accused of a terrible crime, she and her brother travel to Edwardian London in the hopes of preventing the family's ruin. Now Cordelia's mother wants to marry the young girl off, but Cordelia wants to hunt demons rather than become somebody's bride. So she soon encounters her childhood friends Jamie and Lucy uh, Herondale and is drawn into a world of ballrooms, secret rendezvous, and supernatural salons where vampires and warlocks mingle with mermaids and magicians. All the while she must hide her secret love for James who is sworn to marry someone else. But her new life is ripped apart when a shocking series of demon attacks hits London, 
But these monsters are different. They are unlike anything that the Shadow Hunters have seen or thought before. Because these demons can walk in daylight, uh, strike down their victims with an incurable poison, and seem impossible to kill. So London, because of the demons, is immediately quarantined and Cordelia is trapped in the city. But as it turns out, she and her friends discover that their own connection to, uh, to a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers, leading them to a devastating choice that illustrates only too well the price of being a hero. So, you know, I, I am a fan of Cassandra Clare. I think I, I have just about every one of her uh, books that she's written. So, uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to this new series. And I do believe that it's out in November, so it's going to be a while yet. So the next book is entitled Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. So from what I understand, this is a reimagining of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables and tells the story of three teens from very different backgrounds who are thrown together amidst a looming threat of revolution on the French planet of La Terre. So one of the teens is a street savvy thief, one's an officer and the son of a renowned trader, and the other is a guardian living in an underground refuge where she guards and protects the last surviving library on the planet. And as it turns out, all three of them share the same destiny. So this is set in the planet of uh, La Terre, a place where an opulent and oppressive elite class reigns supreme, uh, where the poor starve in the streets, and where a rebel group, long thought dead, is resurfacing. And whispers of revolution have begun. A revolution that hinges on three unlikely heroes. And all three have a role to play in a dangerous game of, of revolution, and together they end up shaping the future of an entire planet. So this sounds uh, quite uh, compelling. So this is number 13 on the final book on my list, and it's entitled The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clara. Yes, this is yet another new series in the Shadowhunter world that follows two of my favorite characters, High Warlock Magnus Bane and Alec Lightwood, as they tour the world after the uh, end of the Mortal War. So they finally settle in Paris, where when an old friend arrives with news about a demon-worshipping cult called the Crimson Hand that is hell-bent on causing chaos around the world. A cult that was apparently founded by Magnus himself years ago as a joke. So now, Magnus and Alec must track down the Crimson Hand and its elusive new leader before the cult can cause any more damage. To make things worse, demons are now dogging their every step and it's becoming harder and harder to tell friend from foe. Okay, so I am really excited about this one because I love uh, Magnus Bane and Alec, as I mentioned. I've actually already pre-ordered it because I want it in my hands right when it comes out. Um, I think I'm gonna, but I think I'm gonna need to read the Bane Chronicles first. I have it on my shelves, but I haven't yet attacked it. So I need to read Magnus's novel before delving into the new series. So that about does it for the YA books that I'm uh, looking forward to. Uh, how about you? Are you planning on reading any of these? If so, which ones? So as always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button below as it helps my channel out. So that's a wrap. I will talk to you in the next video. Roger and out. Oh.